guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Now in today's video we've got something really exciting, it's kind of an update on one of the, um, an old video that I posted uh, a while back and that's how to edit in the style of Garrett King or Short Stash. So as you can see here, this is the photo that we're going to be kind of going ahead and editing. This is the final product, the thing we're going to kind of aim towards to get it to look like. Um, and then this is the before, so if I toggle it before and after, you can see the difference uh, that we can kind of achieve on Lightroom. So I'm going to show you uh, what this is kind of based off. So this is the photo we're kind of basing it off here. This is one of Short Stash's account on Instagram. Do go ahead and check him out. He's got some really cool photos and he's got a really, really unique, nice uh, kind of editing styles. But this is the photo we're kind of basing it off um, and you can see this is the photo we've done here, how similar um, the kind of color grade that I've done and his color grade are. Okay, so wait to the end for some really cool information about how you guys can go ahead and use the tone curve to really change the entire look of this image. So don't skip the video yet, go ahead, keep watching until we kind of get towards the end of the video where I jump into the tone curve and really teach you guys how you can transform your images to really, really, really replicate this style. But before I dive straight into the video, I do want to talk to you a little bit about our preset packs. So as some of you guys may know, we do sell a bunch of preset packs on our website. Um, I really recommend going ahead and checking them out, especially if you're really new to the platform and you really want to kind of learn how to kind of use Lightroom. So lots of these preset packs are kind of in the style of um, a famous Instagram artist and what they kind of aim to do is replicate or give you a very similar look to that Instagram artist style with the intent of kind of cutting out that beginning bit where you dive into Lightroom and you can't really tell exactly what to do to achieve a certain look. With these presets you can just simply click a button it will give you a look that is close near enough um, or kind of similar to an Instagram artist style. Now we have got loads and loads of these preset packs on our website and I haven't got enough time to kind of go through them all in one video but I do recommend going ahead and checking out. There will be a link down below in the description. Go ahead, click that now um, and see what you guys like over there. But what I will say is we have got the entire shop at the moment and in one bundle that you can go ahead and get pretty much every single preset pack that we sell on the website. So that's all of our essential item presets and then it's also all the Instagram artist style ones. So for example, it'll include Short Stash style, uh, Peter McKinnon style, Jon Olsen style, Tony Marford style, all these famous people that you kind of really want to know how they edit. Go and grab those preset packs that will kind of give you a push in the right direction and really help you guys edit. So I really recommend going ahead and checking it out. I'm going to give you a few examples now. So as I said here, this is one of the Short Stashes one. Here's the um, before and the after with our preset pack. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to apply another one here. So this is the Short Stash Penguins one. If I go ahead and click that, there's another edit there. Okay, so without any further ado, let's just dive straight in and start editing this photo. So I'm going to click reset here and that's going to take this photo right back to the start before I applied any of our presets to it. Okay, so this is the raw photo out of the camera that we're going to go ahead and try and replicate Short Stash's style. But before we go anywhere, let's kind of just look through his photos and kind of work out what he does with his photos. So the main thing as you can notice is most of his photos are very kind of dark, nice desaturated tones, um, nothing too vibrant. Uh, he does include some bright colours occasionally, but most of the time this kind of moody, faded, dark, evening kind of desaturated tones we uh, can really see through most of his photos. So let's look at our example here. I mean all of them kind of base around the very similar technique, but this one here, so main things to note. So he only uses a very few colours in his photos and the rest of them are kind of usually desaturated. So for example this one, um, We've got these desaturated browns and greys, a little bit of blue and teal. You can see here in the monkey's face and the pinks. Um, everything else is kind of really desaturated. There's not really much else going on in the image in terms of colour. Um, again, if we come down to one of these ones, we've kind of got an almost orange and teal look here, but we've also got a very desaturated orange and teal and then very dark blues or teals um, in the water here. And also he's not got a really bright, vibrant orange going on in his legs. Um, let's look for another example of one of these. We've got these dark desaturated blues. Uh, these nice orangey browns in the moss. None of his greens are too vibrantly bright and green. Everything else is quite dark. Um, and something that you can really tell in lots of his photos is the amount of fade he puts into the image. So especially in our example here that we're going to be looking at, you can see if you look in the shadows how much he's kind of dragged up the fade to kind of soften the whole image. All of his images are quite dark and have that really nice soft tone to them with a little bit of clarity and sharpness, especially the monkey's face here. Uh, just bring out those really bright highlights and those dark uh, blacks, but nothing too contrasty. Okay, with all that in mind, let's dive straight into editing the photo. Okay, so the first thing to note um, is the white balance. I'm just going to take that down a little bit, maybe down to minus three. I just think it looks a little bit too yellow at the moment, especially in the background here. I just kind of want a little bit of those blue uh, tones in the image. So you can really notice in lots of his photos he has nice warm highlights and quite bluey shadows. So that's something we're definitely going to take into account in a minute. But that's what we're going to start off with. Then we're going to drop our exposure down a little bit to minus 0.25, just to really bring back those highlights a little bit. We don't want too garishly bright highlights. 
His images do have a bit of contrast in them, but he hasn't got really bright popping whites and he doesn't have really dark crushed blacks. So that's another thing we really want to notice when we go ahead and continue on through our basics panel. Okay, so we are going to add in a little bit of contrast. So let's go for a nice 30 there. That kind of adds in a little bit of contrast, kind of depth in the image. Now, obviously, we are going to crush these blacks and take out, put some fade in, so they won't be as dark as they are at the moment. So obviously, you've got to kind of think about this process as you go through. So that's the contrast. Now for the highlights. Now, as I said earlier, you see here we've got some really bright, harsh highlights, especially around the monkey's arms and his face. We want to drop those down a little bit. So we're going to drop this down to about minus 50. Uh, just to kind of really take them back and take out those really bright whites. Now we also want a lot of detail in the shadows, especially down here in the monkey's chest and um, in the background, although the background is quite blurred, but definitely down here in the monkey's chest and on his arms, we want some of the detail of the fur. So we're going to bring those up to about plus 25, uh, just kind of brighten up the shadows and that really brings in a little bit more detail in the shadows that we can kind of use to our advantage when we're editing. Okay, now as I said, again, similar thing with the highlights. The whites are the whitest of the highlights, so I want to bring those down as well. So we're going to drop those down to minus 35. There we go, you can see that really nicely just kind of keeps those highlights definitely there, but it just kind of brings out the harshness of those highlights. Now again, with the blacks, I'm going to bring those up to about three. I don't want to bring them up too much because there's not very many dark blacks. And if I bring them up too high, as you can see on that, it kind of washes out the image and kind of removes all that contrast we added in beforehand. So let's just leave it at plus three. Okay, so on the clarity front, you can kind of go either way with this one. Lots of his photos have clarity in them and have some really nice kind of uh, contrast and sharpness in the fur, for example, and some of them don't have a clarity in them. That kind of, if you bring out the clarity, you take it down, you kind of make your images look really soft um, and faded. That's really a nice theme that he has throughout all of his photos. So we're going to go for that. We're just going to drop it down to about minus five. Nothing too drastic. Again, with the clarity, really don't overdo it. Don't push it too low and don't bring it up too high because it can really change the look of your image for the better. But if you push it too much, it's going to make your image look really, really weird. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing all these edits. Okay, now vibrancy and saturation. Now this really kind of personal preference, but I find that I prefer to bring down the vibrancy and bring up the saturation. I find the vibrancy, if you bring it up too much, really saturates those brightest colors. So if you can see if I bring it up too high um, compared to a really high saturation, um, I don't know, I, I prefer bringing down the saturate, bringing down the vibrancy and bringing up the saturation. It kind of lends towards a really nice soft image and that's the kind of thing we're kind of going for for short stash. So I'm going to bring that down to minus 25. Um, but you can see that's too desaturated now, so let's bring up our saturation to plus 35 um, and that kind of softens it out a little bit. But it also keeps a nice bit of contrast in there. Okay, so as I said at the beginning of the video, here is what promised about the really good information about the tone curve. So the tone curve is basically going to change the entire look of this image, and it's probably the most complicated part about editing in Lightroom, but if you can get this down, you can get this nailed, you can really replicate his look exactly. So the first thing I would do when you jump into the tone curve is make your three-point curve, so you just put one down here on your shadows, one on your midtones, and one on your highlights. Okay, so the first thing is really think about each section. So we're going to start up here in our midtone slash highlights. Um, and again, as we did earlier, I'm just going to drop those down a little bit. Now, I don't want to go too far because we start getting some weird x-ray kind of vibes. And again, up the top, we have some demon monkey. So we don't want that. So we're going to bring it down a little bit, just a touch, just down there. Okay, so one thing we really pointed out was he definitely adds in a bit of fade into his images. So the way we're going to achieve that is by bringing up our shadows here. Now, we don't want to bring them up too much because again, we get some really insane look to the image, but definitely a little bit to kind of soften out those blacks in the background, especially under the arms here. Now, we are going to bring down the shadows a tiny bit and just kind of play around until you can really kind of get the look you wanted. Sometimes it's useful putting in another point here, just kind of sharpen off the curve at the bottom. Um, but I find something like that is probably gonna be pretty decent, just kind of a nice soft curve at the bottom here. Actually, let's just bring, ooh. Let's just bring that one back up a tiny bit, and there we go. So if I turn the tone curve off and on again, it makes a very subtle but definitely adds that short stash vibe to it where we've got those nice um, faded tones. One thing to also note is possibly to bring down your absolute whites up here and just kind of fade those out as well. That's something he definitely does. He doesn't have um, really bright highlights and really dark shadows. He fades basically both ends out. Okay, so now we're kind of mainly done with the tone curve, let's drop down to the HSL sliders. So what we're trying to do here is really kind of get two or three colors in the image. Now I know this, this image is pretty looks pretty uniform at the moment, we've only got what looks like yellow, red and brown, um, but there are blues in the background you can see here, we've got lots of pinks you know, in the face. Some of the skin or some of the fur here is definitely geared towards the green side of the yellows, 
um, and then we've got a bit down here which is kind of pinky red so there are lots of different hues going on here so we're going to control all that in our hue sliders so we're going to leave our reds um, at zero because as you can see I don't want the face looking too sunburnt and I don't want it looking too similar to the skin tone so we're going to leave that at zero on the orange I am going to bring it up a little bit to about plus eight plus ten and then I'm going to counteract that with the yellows. Now the yellows you see I said here looks a little bit too green so we're going to bring that slider down to the left kind of counteract that uh, not that far maybe to about minus 25 let's go for minus 20 I think that's a bit too much. Okay now we don't really have much uh, blue going on in this image so what I am going to do is just kind of drop those blues down to the teal side just because in most of his images you kind of find he has a really soft blue teal and a really soft orange highlight so Blues in the shadows, oranges in the highlights. So we're going to bring down those blues towards the teal side a little bit. Not too much. We are going to be dropping the saturation right off in a minute. So it's not going to make too much of a difference, but definitely just um, if you're doing another photo that's not exactly like this one, bring your blues down to the left a little bit and then drop your saturation down. Okay, so that's basically all we're going to do on the hue sliders because this image, as I said, is quite simple. There's not too much going on. Most of the edits is going to be done in the saturation panel. Okay, so as I said earlier, pretty much all of his photos are pretty desaturated. So we're going to achieve that effect by dropping all, ooh, not that far, pretty much all of our colors down um, to basically the same value but minus 35 minus 35 minus 35 now straight away you look at that and that looks really really desaturated um, and doesn't look quite right but we're going to change that a little bit in the split toning in a minute so it's going to kind of balance it out bring up the luminance and you'll see uh, the difference that makes in a minute now as i said earlier on the aquas we're going to bring those down and then on the blues we're going to bring those down as well so we've basically desaturated the entire image uh, but kind of controlled which areas we're desaturating. If anything, I think I might just bring up those yellows just a touch because I think we've just dropped them down a little bit too much, so about minus 22 on the yellows. Okay, so on the luminance, I am going to bring up certain bits that I want to kind of boost the highlights. So I want to make the highlights in the face a little bit brighter, so I'm going to bring those up to about plus 5. Nothing too drastic. Actually, I think maybe about 10. Um, and then I'm going to bring up the oranges to about 5 as well. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the yellows to about 15. Now when you increase the luminance, it kind of also adds a little bit more saturation back um, into those specific colours. So I'm going to bring that up to about plus 22. Um, greens, we haven't really got much there, but I'm going to bring those up a little bit as well. Now with the blues and aquas, you want to bring down your luminance down to about minus 40. Now that's basically going to darken off those blues and kind of give you a really nice look, especially in the sky if you've got an image that has blue skies. Um, bringing down the blues to the left, bringing down the saturation and the luminance down will kind of really give you the look that he has in all of his photos. Okay, so next up, split toning. This is kind of really what makes and breaks the image, um, in my opinion. So first off, we're going to dive in straight off and give a value of 50 to the highlights. Now if I hold down Alt and click that button, you can see there's a nice orange glow to the highlights. Um, and we're going to drop in a nice value of 12 on the saturation. So there you go, you can see that immediately adds some saturation back into the image. So we removed a lot of the saturation down here. But what we've done is immediately added in a nice uniform soft yellow saturation to kind of all of the monkey, the most of the highlights. Okay, now in the shadows, there's kind of two things you can do here. Either you can go for a, a blue shadow or you can go for more of an icy teal shadow. Now I'm going to go for the icy teal one because I think I've tried that before and this one looks quite nice on this image. So about 180 does a really nice kind of shadow for that. So if I hold down Alt and click that, you can see that's a really nice teal kind of color there. So let's just drag the saturation there only up to about five because too high um, and it really changes the look of the image but you can see immediately that adds that really definitive bluey teal color to his shadows and that nice orange glow to the highlights now just as an example if you hold down alt and you bring your slider down to the left just to the right sorry just add a little bit more blue that's the kind of look you can get um, with a blue shadow so very subtle differences but i think for this particular photo we're going to go for 180. Next up, we're going to come down to sharpening, which can add a little bit more sharpening and just kind of bring out the sharpness on the monkey's face. And then we are also going to add in a shed ton of noise reduction because we have introduced a little bit of noise up here when we've crushed those shadows. Um, so about 30 looks pretty good. I think that's probably a little bit too high. So let's go for 25. Just kind of remove that noise reduction and really soften out the whole image. Okay, so now we've pretty much done it. So if I do it before and after, you can see the drastic difference we've made just by going all the way through. We are not finished though, let's kind of jump down to the effects and the camera calibration. Now most of his photos, as you can see here, have a kind of vignette going on. Now this side he's got a dark vignette, then he has a white vignette here. Uh, but for this photo, because there's no real definitive angle where the light is coming from, it seems to be kind of face onto the monkey, we're going to kind of do a nice vignette around most of the image. So we're going to grab our highlight priority here and just drag it down to the left a little bit. Not too far, maybe to about minus 12, I think that's possibly a little bit too far, minus 18. 
Okay, that's pretty much a nice vignette there, soft vignette across the whole image. Okay, then camera calibration. I'm going to bring up the red primary, um, just to about plus 17, uh, saturation to about 10. Now, lots of people put in the comments why you adjust the camera calibration, like it's to adjust the kind of look of the actual camera photo. Now, yes, you can kind of use it to correct your kind of white balance and all your different kind of red, green, and blue primary of your photos out, just raw out of the camera. But you can also use it to really kind of add some really cool effects to images. So that's the reason why I use it. Um, and lots of other people do use it as well, just kind of add some really cool effects that you can't really get through the HSL sliders. Okay, now the green primary, I'm going to add up to 7, and then the blue primary down to about minus 15. Uh, and just, just drop the saturation there to about minus 5. Now, if you just kind of, that's been a bit of a whistle stop tour through there, but basically what the best way to kind of work out what you're doing there is just kind of slide the sliders around and see what works best and the images that kind of work nicest. Usually with the blues, you kind of get this kind of pink um, and orangey kind of vibes. So there we go. Um, and with a kind of teal in the background. So that's the reason why I did that, to kind of bring in a little bit more teal to the shadows and a little bit more pink to the image because we had a little bit too much green going on there. Green primary can do some really wacky things. Okay, so that's pretty much all of it done, to be honest. Um, so as you can see, if I do a before and an after, the drastic difference all of that editing has made. I will say a couple of adjustments you can make is coming up and getting the brush tool, dropping the exposure a bit, maybe bring up the clarity as well, and then just brushing in some sh the shadows a little bit, just making the shadows a little bit darker because um, you can really see that in lots of his images he kind of really adds a little bit more natural contrast in certain places you can tell he's kind of gone through and done with the ellipse tool or the brush tool so we're just going to use that to kind of brush around in the areas where we think we want a little bit more shadow nothing too drastic um, then we're going to make a new brush increase that and we're going to increase our exposure and the clarity and we're going to brush that over the monkey's face now what this will do is kind of divert the viewer's attention straight towards the monkey's face and his hands here where this is the center of attention now that exposure is a little bit too high so we're going to drop that off a little bit but increasing the clarity and the sharpness and that should just really kind of draw the viewer's attention more towards the monkey's face okay there we go that's pretty much it guys that's pretty much done um, again here we do a before and an after before after before after you can see how much difference all those little adjustments have made so jumping back and let's just click the uh, the preset here that we applied earlier to see how similar to that look we've got so okay so a very similar look but of course I think the preset works a little bit better with this particular photo but as you can tell uh, this is the preset and then that's the look that we got from doing our edits so definitely something that's really useful is applying the presets in this case the preset I think got a little, little bit of a nicer effect than my editing going through here but obviously that depends on the photo that you guys want to apply it to so do go ahead check out our preset packs it will really help support the channel guys the link will be down below in the description as usual do go ahead jump over there check out some stuff do go ahead and check out the whole shot pack that is reduced at the moment it's a huge reduction um, so go ahead and check that out at the moment you can get get the chance to kind of get your hands on pretty much every single one of our preset packs on the website um, for a massive reduced price at the moment so do go ahead and get that if you're really interested so we'll see you guys in the next video guys leave a comment down below if you guys enjoy this like the video and we'll see you guys in the next video live long and prosper